Right, well, here I go. I'm going to introduce what I'm going to be doing for the next, I don't know how many weeks, actually. <laughs> I'm going to do a banjo challenge that I've set myself. And the banjo challenge is for me to really uh, improve on my banjo picking, my time and my playing, and I'm going to marry that up with singing. So, like, oh my gosh, like, this is just my own personal challenge as well. So, and the reason for it, put it on YouTube, it's just my own accountability. And also that real connection I have with my friends and family to be able to see my face and say, oh my gosh. And when I'm playing, it's all on my face. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to quickly take you back as to explain what I did in 2019, because it'll make sense how mad this is. Not really. Um, I used to be part of a banjo group, and I remember one time sitting in the banjo group, and one of the buddies said that he would really love to be able to play the Earl Scruggs five string banjo, all the tunes. And the teacher at the time sort of scoffed a little bit and went, oh, oh that's impossible. And I remember thinking, that's such a negative thing to say. You know, everybody's playing is subjective and nobody has to play like Earl Struggs and be perfect, but it's the doing of it that makes us, you know, that whole kind of ethos of 10,000 hours is just like, come on, just practice and practice. So in 2019, I decided to take a tune a day and I'd look at it, I'd listen to it, I'd play it for about an hour or more. And then what I would do is I'd record an audio file of it and send it out to friends and family. Like mistakes and all, I got to the point where at the end of it, I definitely seen a real master, I saw, at the end of it, I saw uh, an improvement in my playing. And actually that there was such a lovely thing to be able to be able to do. And um, for a while I've been sitting thinking I need a little challenge to really sort of push my banjo playing on. So I got came across this book and it's the Earl Scruggs songbook and there's 85 tunes in it. And yeah, a lot of singing in them. So actually, I have a lovely vinyl collection that if I fill in some gaps here, it'll make all sense. I had cancer back in 2017. And uh, part of all my treatment and everything else, and if you go through my YouTube, you'll see all different types of me, which is great, from 2013 and then through all, all the other bits and pieces. So when I was really ill, actually, the banjo for me was such a lovely mental medicine and being able to listen to the tracks. So I was able to source like great vinyl on eBay and try and really think, well, I could put together a really cool, quite comprehensive um, Flat and Scruggs, Don Reno, John Hartford, String Bean. Oh, Don Reno, did I say Don Reno? Sonny Osborne. Oh my gosh, I could keep going, keep going with all my banjo real legends. So when I got this book, I thought, well, actually, what a wonderful way to set myself a challenge to be able to take a tune I'm going to try and aim for two or three tunes a week to post. Um, print off the lyrics that, oh my gosh, and I am not a singer. Um, but when I played in Crow Hall with uh, Lucy and the cellist, I was always in the background of the harmony. And I've, I've always wanted to be able to sing and play, but I find it really hard to, to put the two together. And I'm sure you, <laughs> I'm sure when you start and I start with the first tune, I'm kind of hoping by tune 10 or tune 15 or tune 40, I don't know. But I'll it, they'll all become a bit more sort of together and seamless so that's why I'm going to keep the momentum going and what I did back in 2019 is any tune I thought I'd rushed and didn't give the time it deserved I went back and really learnt it and played it and I'll do the same with this so yeah I'm kind of thinking that sets the scene as to why I'm doing the challenge and it's not for anything other than my own personal improvement of the banjo and the accountability of being able to go back and say, well, hang on, look, actually that was rubbish or actually that wasn't rubbish, but my tone wasn't good there. Or even trying to hear what key I should be in or how the two go together. And like I do my backup. It's, I'm going to keep it really simple. Do you know what I mean? I'm not sure you see my fingers in this bit, but it's going to be nothing like major while I'm, I'm playing and then singing and then trying to get out of the, the singing into the playing and the break, and because I'm not playing with anybody else, it does feel a little bit, at this stage, it does feel a bit like fragmented. So maybe it will never sound anything other than fragmented or by tune, whatever, 62 or 22, it might sound lovely. But anyway, so as part of my lovely vinyl collection, I've got this lovely bit of vinyl, cracking outfits. And what we've got is actually the first tune I'm gonna play, which is Before I Met You. And this is on this album. So I've listened to it and listened to it and listened to it, which is again, a lovely mindful thing. I'm sat having a cup of tea or a beer and I'm like, I'm really trying to get the timing and the phrasing of it in my brain. And I'm not that I'm trying to rep uh, reproduce like flat and strokes. I'm just trying to, I'm trying to get it as honest and authentic as I can, but also very much as me, <laughs> as you'll see. So um, I'm going to try and do this. I'm not going to worry about mistakes because otherwise I could record this a billion trillion times. There's a pesky D in this 
And actually, if I was to give this the credit it did deserve, I would loop three or four bars for maybe a couple of hours just to try and get it to be as seamless as I can. And I think what I notice is after I've played it, I've got the book on this book on Thursday, so I've today's Sunday, so yeah, Thursday. Friday. So I'm going to aim for like maybe a tune every four days and see how that works. But again, I'm not going to be too rigid on that, so you know, it'll be on my YouTube. So if you're subscribing to it, you'll get an automatic ping when I've posted. But um, the bits I, I know already, I've, I'm a wee bit like, oh, I'm not too sure this is going to be really good, but I think. Yeah, I'm going to trust the fact that there'll be one time I'll be sat there going, this doesn't sound too shabby, you know. So, and oh my God, I can't even imagine what I'm going to be like when I get the tune 85. Um, yeah, that's going to be pretty epic, actually. So it's, it's exciting, the thought of the momentum and moving on from a tune. And actually, some of the skills that I've got from before I met you will filter through the book. I know they will because of playing the book before, actually. There was, uh, there's some real common phrases and stuff that he uses. So anyway, right. Okay, I'm going to try and get my head now into like waltz time because before I met you, it's very much a one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So it's that. So it's like, yeah. And this tune was recorded in 1955 and it's on the, what did I say it was? The Flat and Scruggs with the Foggy Mountain Boys and it's that album there. Okay. And you can see, I think it's great. The Flat and, what's the book say? Sign Source, Lester Flat and Earl Scruggs, Greatest Hits. Right, okay, one, two, three. One, two, three, four. It's not overly fast as well, which is a lovely way to start, especially with a sing. But I've got to give it gusto. <laughs> two, okay, one, two, three, one, two, three. Thought I had seen pretty girls in my town. That was before I met you. Never saw one that I wanted for my Oh, 
born so I had me plans of living alone That was before I met you Thought I was swinging the world by the tail I thought I could never be blue Thought I'd been kissed and I thought I'd been loved There's bits that annoy me. I'm gonna have to be really quite disciplined not to record it again because, um, yeah, getting from the break back in, I struggle. Um, the pesky day, I struggle. I wanted to redo the last verse because I thought, ah, oh, come on, let's try and get that in to try and get one more day in. So, um, I'm gonna leave it like this because actually, part of the ethos is this is actually not to be like so stifled by my mistakes that I stop playing. I want to be able to move on. So the next tune is Big Black Train. And actually, I do I, I can't even remember. I don't even know what this sounds like. So I'm going to have to get the album that matches it. And I, I know I've got it because I looked at the first few thinking, do I have these vinyls? So, and I listened to it. And I said, it's a good one, it's a good one. But I'm, I'm going to stick to the ethos of this and not to be like so bogged down by... There's bits that aren't good and there's bits that don't sound fresh, not fresh, um, just singing with gusto. I lose my kind of momentum and I, the two together, I think if I was just to sing it, like totally like a cappello with no sound on it at all and then do my banjo break and then sing it and then do my banjo break. I kind of think that might work okay, but um, well, when I say that now I'm going to be really tempted to do it and I think I'm going to really make this up. I might do just do one and then see. It's that pesky day. It's so annoying. And that's that bit where I think, well, oh my God, I should be spending way more time on this. I should be like spending like days and days and days. And I think, no, remember the challenge is to is to get yourself there. And maybe I've set myself too high putting the plan on, you know. So um, I'm now thinking, do I, don't I, do I, don't I, do I, don't I? I think I'm going to sing. And I'm going to try, sing on capello and then just play one break and then leave it like that. Okay, all right, okay, I've decided that. <laughs> right, so I'm going to... I thought I had seen pretty girls in my time, but that was before I met you. I never saw one that I wanted for mine, but that was before I met you. I thought I was swinging the world by the tail I thought I could never be blue I thought I'd been kissed and I thought I'd been loved But that was before I met you So it's an interesting, it's an interesting challenge. So it's, uh, yeah, I remember from before in the 2019, there was always some bits that always just, I just, I couldn't leave. And I thought, ah, so, but here now it's like nearly 15 minutes. So oh my gosh, nobody wants to listen to me for 15 minutes prattling on, but yeah. Okay. So there we go. My singing's raw. It's not great. It's fragmented. The I'm kind of thinking somewhere in my break, 
I am not getting the timing right, or not not necessarily the the the, the intonation where the emphasis should be on the the three four, and I think that's sort of set me all of a kilter, and I'm kind of thinking what a tune to start with, but I don't know. So anyway, uh, I'm going to move on. I'm going to forget about it. And tomorrow I'm going to start Big Black Train. So I'm going to look on it. It's on the Essential Flat and Scruggs. Tis sweet to be remembered. And it's it's quite a lot of pages. Oh, no, it's not. Phew. It's two pages. So, and I think I'm going to hopefully hope this is better. So, <laughs> right. Anyway, that's it. Day one, done. <laughs>